Hello and welcome back to yet another game. Today we are watching Yo and the Viper playing as the Chinese on the War is Coming variant of what I believe to be islands. The main difference between this, just as a quick note, is I think the placement of the gold or stone islands, of course, being in the middle of the two players on this map as we see right now. However, on regular islands, the vanilla version of the islands what you can see is you can see the island ending up at the back of one player and having it be basically favoured totally towards them and the other player having practically no chance of ever getting that island unless they do some silly business and go forward on their opponent. Of course here we do see it in the middle of the two players. You're there of course saying Yes, I have an advantage when I random Chinese. Because I assume what these two players are doing is they're just going mirror match up random. Of course, Chinese on islands of dubious usage, they do have obviously the incredible benefit of just having more villages, but at the same time, not getting that food. So if you don't get your sheep in quickly, you don't get that food in, you will really be stuck behind. They do have... I suppose the benefit in having the team bonus of I think 45 extra food on their farms which is useful and can help you invest uh, a little bit more wood into galleys and into docks rather than making farms but it is not the greatest advantage. Now I do imagine that we will be seeing relatively standard play from both players on an island's map. So let's take a look at their maps right now. Neither player is particularly close to the water in such a way that they could uh, really get hurt from losing the water. This um, this wood that Vipers decide to go from is quite close to the water and could end up being an issue for him. Also where he's docking right now is not good. He's got one big fish over here and other than that he has nothing. So he's soon going to realize that he's very close to this island in the middle and probably going to put uh, a secondary dock up somewhere else, perhaps over here or over here. Here would be a great position where he's got a whole lot more fish. Where is Yo putting up his dock? He's got his dock up right here. Not the worst position, once again having one big fish right here, which you'll see quite immediately. Though of course over here or over here would be a better position. His gold's not in excellent positions though, considering that he's not going to be able to get a full surround on those very easily, because they're right up against this wood. Also, uh, that could be a big issue if we see Viper landing or something, because two golds right next to each other. And that is basically his entire gold income right there, and really doesn't have a whole lot else other than that, so that's... It's actually really not too good to have your golds that close together because it means you have nothing to fall back on if you lose one of them. Conversely, we see for the Viper, we see the gold there. And does he have another gold? Or does he not have another gold? Because I don't see another gold for Viper. I just see this one. Do my eyes deceive me? In any case, that is... A actually quite strange for both players. Yo of course having a lot more gold, Viper only having this one down here. And yeah, he's noticed that too. In any case, how are the players uptimes looking? Very similar on both of these and some may argue that there's a significant advantage in going up a bit earlier than your opponent on islands so you can start rushing them but usually you'll end up getting two to three galleys out and by that time that they reach your opponent he will have his two or three galleys out at the same time meaning that essentially you won't be able to do a whole lot of damage to their fishes and of course in galley wars what you want to do is you want to prioritize killing your opponent's fishing ships because what this means is that they'll have to make more fishing ships and thus sacrifice at the time they could be producing galleys which you will almost never see players do because they really won't want to lose the water straight away and just won't want to give up on it or conversely what they'll have to do is they'll have to put wood into farms or they'll have to put villages over onto berries and that's just going to mean that 
They'll be getting less galleys out. They'll be getting less gold and they'll be getting less wood uh, to go for the galleys. Currently we are seeing white percent for these two galleys and you're getting those galleys out over here as well. No doubt both players are going to be trying to take out their opponent's fishes, but Yori isn't aiming for the fishes, he's aiming for this galley here, which he really shouldn't be, and he shouldn't be getting locked into that fight there. And perhaps going to get one, not even one fisher off of the Viper right now. Whereas the Viper has taken, it looks like, two of Yo's fishes and is now just getting away. So really that wasn't effective there for Yo because he did send his galley forward to harass and didn't even kill a single fishing ship. We're of course going to see blacksmiths up quite soon because you'll want to get fletching. Of course giving the range bonus and attack bonus not only to archers but also to galleys and there we see fletching coming out for Yo. How about the Viper were we seeing from his blacksmith? Viper and Yo both having fletching right now. And here is Yo about to sink all the Viper's fishing ships. There's no way he can get away from this. And this is really the crucial point where we start seeing players building up to an amount of uh, galleys. That we'll see who's going to win the water and who's going to lose the water. But what I am intrigued by there is uh, Viper deciding to go with the barracks. I can't think of any reason other than that than uh, him deciding to go for a landing. And of course, that certainly being the case, filling up this transport ship with three villagers. No doubt going to land on his opponent's island and presumably going to make some archers considering he'll have no difficulty whatsoever transitioning into those because of his gold and wood income at the moment. However, it looks like in doing that he's uh, basically entirely going to sacrifice the water which isn't the biggest issue for him considering some of his resource positions. He does have his gold here in a safe position that won't be harassed easily. And he does have a few safe woods. He does have this wood here, which is definitely safe. And we're going to see that archery range coming up very soon, I imagine. But where is he going to put it up? That is the question. And how quickly will he notice the key importance of denying these golds? Because what he does in denying these golds is effectively uh, entirely halts Yo's ability to produce any galleys whatsoever without building a market or otherwise getting some sort of gold income in which really at this stage you can't besides building a market and could also actually make him unable to get into the castle age if he effectively denies this gold right here so there we see those archers coming out of course going to be benefited by fletching at the same time and we'll see if they've got archer armor on them because archer armor may be helpful in this case as I am going to expect some sort of defensive coming up from Yo very quickly he's probably going to want to as soon as he sees this tower these two golds because he does know that if he loses these golds he's lost all of his gold income and right now we aren't seeing Viper go heavily into the water whatsoever he's totally ceased all galley production and it looks like he is just content to lose this right now and cause what damage it can to Yo's galleys. We see these archers coming out. They're going to be cutting down these villages. Uh, as soon as Viper sees this coming up here, he is definitely going to want to deny that watchtower. And there is also Yo going up with the market, realizing that he's not going to be able to effectively get in the gold income. And here, here we see, of course, what Viper's planning on doing. Just going to camp out his archers directly under that watchtower so it cannot shoot them at all because, of course, not having murder holes. Murder holes allowing you to shoot units directly below your towers. I have another one coming over up here and definitely going to be killing off these archers. Though, right now, Viper has effectively forced Yo off all of his gold and. Given that that's the case, 
Yo is going to be have is going to have to uh, buy resources. He's going for a stone wall up here, so definitely doesn't want vipers archers to push through any further. But they're going to go down here through this wall. I think viper just also used his galleys there to add a bit of damage and get through that wall very quickly. So really of key interest right now to the Viper is simply doing as much damage as he can and certainly preventing his opponent from getting any military units out, getting an effective warlock and really just hurting his economy because he's forcing him to tower all of his resources right now. And I'm not sure what, had, what Yo was doing over here with these villages but he sent plenty over there to build one wall. In any case, Yo is upping and he's going to certainly be up before the Viper, but what can he do in this situation? Because he doesn't even have a barracks up, it looks like. So he's not going to be able to produce any units whatsoever, whereas the Viper is going to be consistently pumping out those archers, as his economy is certainly strong enough for him to do that, and it looks like at the same time he's also making some more docks over here which is an interesting enough decision. I'm not sure what he's doing this for, perhaps going to go heavy into the water again. And yes, that appears to be what he's doing, not just docking this over here to get some fishing ships out and get the food and come in. He is going to be going back into the water and this is going to be coming in on top of the massive amount of archers he has right here. Getting crossbowmen, going to be getting Bodkin very quickly. There's Bodkin coming out right now for him. And the Viper is definitely in an advantageous position because he has caught his opponent to tower all of his resources, just going to cut down these villages here, but make it all coming out. And this is really perhaps going to be the saving grace for Yo if he can get a couple of good mangonel shots on the Viper's crossbowmen and thus push him off of his base. Because really, many of his resources are being denied right now, and he can't get that income in. He does have another town center up right now, whereas the Viper does not seem to be putting one up. It seems like he's just going to a university here to get ballistics, and going to have ballistics as well as getting the war galley upgrade, no doubt going to be pushing very hard into the water, and he's going for incredibly aggressive play style right now getting a market up, but yes, as we see, still no town centers. So he's definitely going for an all-in push on Yo, getting War Galley, getting Ballistics, and going heavy into the Archers. But it looks like at this time, his push has effectively been repulsed, and these Archery Rangers are about to get raised. The major issue was going to be having right now is that he could potentially fall behind in economy considering it's going for practically an all-in push and he really doesn't have the gold for it because in some respects his economy can be considered lacking simply just uh, due to the resources he's got here and I'm not sure he'll be able to sustain the gold income in order to be able to go all in but he is going for Imperial Age. So he's going to get a very good Imperial time, of course, at the expense of his economy, and then going to be wanting to get Galleon. <laughs> there, of course, Viper like saying, my island only has one gold, and that's unfair. That is strange, considering that I'd imagine most of the war is coming uh, maps would be balanced for competitive play, but yes, having only one gold on your island is definitely an issue, and that's something Viper is going to have to play around. And what Yo is doing here is he set one to patrol, this is a common strategy of C, but Viper does have ballistics, I think, so that's really not going to be doing a whole lot, considering ballistics makes it much easier to hit moving targets. So patrolling the one that's being uh, attacked, not going to make a whole lot of difference, and really in many respects will just leave you down on firepower. Ballistics really uh, makes any micro players try and push out quite negligible. 
because your opponent can still hit you effectively. So I imagine he's going to be one in two. Oh, there. Yo just deciding to resign right now. That's an interesting decision, but I would say that is really warranted considering he's just lost all of his navy here. He sees Viper goes up to Imperial. It's, uh, it's strange to see him uh, just GG out at that time there, as soon as Vipe went up to Imperial. But yes, I'd say it is warranted. And Viper's play, despite his issue with the golds, was pretty effective and uh, really reinforces the axiom of, I'd say, the, uh, the AOC game, which is just sort of play your map. Don't do something that you feel like doing, do something that will be good based on your map. And Viper has really used his map effectively here, and really used his opponent's map effectively here in denying those golds for such a long time. So, uh, a very good play there from the Viper.